Judy asked, I was wondering, in a 7.2.4 system, even though the surrounds and back channels don't handle as much content information as the front channels or the center channel, wouldn't it make sense to have all seven ground channels identical to each other and have them amplified using the exact same amplifiers so that all the channels have exactly the same tone and sound the same size? It seems to me that the sound of a bullet going from a big speaker in the front to a small speaker in the back, uh, it might not be the ideal situation. If money were no object, what are your thoughts on that? Thank you in advance. Judy, that's a phenomenal question. So the thought here is, wouldn't it be the best scenario to have all identical speakers for your front left, your center speaker, your right speaker, your side surrounds, your rear surrounds, and if you have front wides, even the front wides. And so that whole bed layer at the bottom having identical speakers. In an ideal world, absolutely. There's nothing more incredible than having identical speakers all around. I actually had an opportunity to experience this when I went up to Kansas City uh, probably about a year ago. There's a gentleman by the name of Jonathan that has a JBL system and every one of his speakers, we're talking all of his bed layer, but he also has identical speakers in his Atmos. And so this was probably the most immersive experience I've ever had. I mean, it's just truly phenomenal when all of those speakers have the same exact characteristics, use the same exact drivers. It's an absolutely seamless transition when sound travels from say a front left speaker to the back right speaker or across your front sound stage or in your uh, surrounds and even Atmos. So to answer your question, if money were no object, would I do that? 100%. Now, granted, you've got to have the space for that. In my setup, my room isn't deep enough for me to put towers in the back. Um, I can't even put towers on the side because that's where my walkway is. And so if you're going to do that, you're going to need a pretty significant size room or very little um, seating in the middle so that you've got room around your edge, uh, around your seating location to be able to accommodate for that. Um, it is a lot more expensive to do that. And so in all practicality, you know, is it detrimental? Let's just ask that question. Is it detrimental not to have identical speakers on the bed layer? And so my answer to that question is absolutely not. Um, I've experienced a ton of home theaters and the vast majority of them do have smaller surrounds, smaller back surrounds, smaller Atmos than their front LCR, their front left, center, and right speaker. And it sounds absolutely phenomenal. And so again, going back to your question, if you have the funds, if you have the space, by all means, go ahead and go for it. Um, some people are gonna look at you and say, man, that's just overkill, you really don't need it. Is that true? Probably so. But if you've got the money to put nine towers in your system or seven towers in your system, um, you're probably not worried about overkill. You just want the best sound possible. And absolutely, I say go for it. But it's just not practical for the vast majority of home theater enthusiasts. And so the other part of your question is, wouldn't it be best to have the same identical amplifiers? So again, in a, um, in a perfect scenario, having identical amplifiers, identical power, identical speakers, sure, that would be absolutely ideal. Keep in mind, you're going to need more space, more power coming to your room. If you've got, you know, multiple amplifiers that are say 200 watts a channel or 300 watts a channel or 100 watts a channel and so forth. Um, so you're gonna possibly need a rack and you're gonna be able to have to stack all of those amplifiers. So again, that's perfect world scenario, okay? That is the ideal situation. Yes, I think having identical speakers, identical amplification, yeah, that's a great thing. Nothing wrong with that. But again, I want to just kind of share is that detrimental to a system if you don't have that? And I say absolutely not. I have heard, again, time and time again, different configurations, different home theaters that have sometimes even different amplifiers. 
and I never once listened to their system and went, man, I can tell that they're not using identical power for the fronts and the rears because your AVR and your processor is going to level match that inside your, your processor or your AVR. And so it doesn't, for the most part, doesn't matter the amplification being sent to your speakers, okay? It's gonna balance it internally in your AVR. So your brain isn't going to know, oh wow, those really need more power, okay? And so, and the other thing is having even different amplifiers um, sometimes you can't afford to buy brand new and so maybe you buy used amplifiers and, and somebody will find a good deal on say a four channel amplifier and then later on they find a five channel amplifier or two channel amplifier and maybe they're even different brands, okay? I truly believe the vast majority on this planet, if we were to do a blind A-B comparison, we're going to do that at an event I'm heading to and that I'm hosting, me and myself and, and Ryan called M-Wave, the Midwest AV experience just next week. And so we're gonna be doing some blind comparisons. We're gonna let people hear two amplifiers, okay? Can they hear a difference between maybe a class D and a class AB if they don't know what they're listening to? You know, so I'm, I'm curious to see what that's going to unfold and what that's going to present. But I think for the vast majority of people, you wouldn't be able to tell. So again, ideal world, yes, absolutely, go for it. Identical, um, power identical amplifiers. But again, in my own setup, I have a single amplifier powering all 11 speakers. But that single amplifier has different levels of amplification. My front three speakers are getting 200 watts per channel. 200 watts to my left, 200 watts to my center, 200 watts to my, my right. But my side surrounds, my back surrounds, and my four Atmo speakers those are all receiving a hundred watts. And so your brain is thinking, well, Michael, you're getting less power back there, less power up there. Your brain surely has to know that they don't have enough power, right? No, again, internally, my processor, the AV, the Marantz AV7706, it goes in and it checks the levels of the fronts, it checks the levels of the sides and the Atmos, and it's going to level match those and balance those. So when I'm listening to a system, it's completely balanced. The rears are just as loud as the fronts, the heights are just as loud as the surrounds, and so it's a very immersive experience. And so I think it's a great question. Is it ideal? Absolutely. In a perfect world, in an unlimited budget, if you've got plenty of extra cash flow and you want to do that, absolutely. Is it overkill and necessary? I wouldn't say it's overkill, but it's definitely not necessary to get a great home theater experience. I think you can definitely have smaller speakers for your sides and surrounds and even your Atmos versus your larger tower speakers maybe for your fronts and still get an incredible experience. And likewise, I think you can absolutely get an incredible experience even if your amplification isn't the same power and sometimes even the same brand. Well, if you enjoyed this type of video, make sure you like and subscribe because I'm answering your questions as well as sharing product reviews for home theater and home theater tours. If you got a question, leave it down in the comments below. And as always, you guys be blessed and we will catch you in the next video.